So we're going to talk about our SB1000-31. It is our Superbank. It is the one of the bigger models of Superbanks that we do offer. The good thing about this one is it is in a Group 31 case, so it's very common in Marine World. A very common case in general as far as BCI sizes go. Now this is a 1000 farad, so it is rated for roughly, what would we say, Brady, 8,000 watts for this one battery? I'd say. So what does that really mean, Sean? Tell, tell me what that means. Which part? What, why do I need a Superbank? So the great thing about a super bank is, if you think about in your vehicle when you're listening to the audio system or anything where there's a load present that's a variable load, for example, if it's pulling 5 amps, then 50 amps, then 5 amps, you're going to have voltage that fluctuates. Well, that fluctuation is dependent on how the battery can respond. So you may, on a 12-volt operating system, say with a stock alternator, you may be at 14.6. Well, when the base drops, you may be down 10, 11 volts, depending on your setup. So that's when I see my headlights start to flicker. Exactly. Got it. So the, the headlight flickering is just a voltage fluctuation. That's how you'll know. Um, the cool thing about a Superbank is that buffers that wave. So if you think about a high and a very low with a Superbank, that minimizes the change. The Superbank basically buffers the highs and the lows, and they charge instantaneously quick. They can work with AGM. So just this battery right here, uh, Brady, go ahead and lift that up for us and tell me what you think that weighs. What is, what is that? About 18 pounds. Very light. So the good thing about this is, is that one battery with the battery up front is good for 8,000 watts, and you can expect upwards of 25 years out of this battery. Another great opportunity we have here is we have our top mount voltmeters. Now the good thing about these is they will, using the bezel, they will pop right onto the top of the battery and allow you to monitor voltage, see if the battery is dead without needing a voltmeter. So they'll mount right in this location, already built into the battery? Yep. Yep, they will mount right into the top, um, just as the same as what it would look here except with a small display. So Sean, you talk about supercapacitors, so are you talking like back in the day, the old single farad canister style capacitor, something, something like this, or what's the difference? So funny that we, we sat this out today, and this is a good teaching tool, and anybody that's just curious, um, this is similar to what you would see in the old days as far as a capacitor shape. Many people recognize this from maybe the 90s, 2000s, and 2010s as a 1, 5, 20, 50, or 100 farad capacitor. Well, this by itself, a bank of six of these makes a regular battery as far as one that can go safely up to the 14 to 15 volt range. So that's not 12 volts. I see 2.85 volts. So you have to bank those together to build. Correct. This. Gotcha. So this case actually has 12 of a minute. So it is two banks put together inside the case and it is a thousand farads. So this one is good up to 16.2 volts. The good thing about this is, is that those farad capacitors that you see, a 10 farad capacitor may cost what, $100, $200, maybe even more sometimes, Absolutely. based on what we've seen. Well, this one is a 1,000 Farad capacitor, and it's only, it's less than $1,000, and you can expect 25 years out of it. Now, the cool thing about this opportunity as well is that this is all you'll need to initially charge. There's not a complicated charge process with these because they do come very low. What you'll do is you'll hook this up in line with an AGM or a good charger, which we do have as well, and in about five minutes, it's ready to charge. And as long as it's connected to a 12 volt AGM battery that's adequately charged, you'll never have to individually charge this again. So you brought up something else too. So say I've got four Group 31 batteries in my build. I've got a Tahoe and I've got about 8,000 total watts. I'm still seeing voltage drop. I've got an upgraded alternator and I've got that battery bank, but I'm still seeing those highs and lows when the base hits. So are you saying take one of those batteries out and replace it? with this or should I do more or what's what's your recommendation as far as builds like that? So there's really many ways to do that. It depends on what your what your idea is and what your theory is and what your voltage to look like. So if you want your voltage to stay 14, if it's 14.8 and you want it to stay at 14, then we may be talking about more of this. If you're looking to add one product to say, say we're dropping 12, 100 a load, which is still acceptable, but maybe you don't want to drop that load. I, I mean, I'm, I want it to be as flat as possible. Then adding, say, maybe one of these on 8,000 watts with three other AGMs, taking out one 31 AGM and replacing okay. one of these, you're going to see a substantial notice of stiffening of voltage. Plus, even I'm going to drop probably 60 pounds of weight. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And not to mention, your AGMs may last in, in a high-use, heavy-abuse environment where you're constantly draining, constantly charging back up. You're going to see potentially 10 times as long of a lifespan. Okay. So if you break down the cost of an AGM versus this, 
you're saving money, not to mention the savings of the weight, moving it around, and the safety that a super bank brings, it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for integration to pretty much any system as long as the voltage is accurate. So where are these made? Uh, are they out on a boat waiting with all my other Christmas presents that haven't <laughs> shown up yet? Or what, what's the shipping status on these? So we take great pride in where we make our products. Um, Excess Power are based originally out of Knoxville. We have locations in Las Vegas and New York. And we take great pride in this right here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Made in the USA. We take great pride in these. These are made in New York um, by just everyday people. They go to work just like anywhere else. Um, as you can see on the front of this super bank, made in the USA. We take great pride in that. Very cool. Sean, thanks for all your information.